Hi, my name is Danielle Hausman. I'm an occupational therapist and rehab educator at the Craig H. Nielsen Rehabilitation Hospital. Thank you for watching this video about skin inspections. Please take a moment to read this disclaimer and keep in mind that this video does not replace medical advice from your healthcare provider. And also keep in mind that these videos are updated frequently and please make sure that you're watching the most current version. During this video, we'll talk about when skin inspections should be completed, including how frequently, and we'll talk about the steps of how to complete a skin inspection. So why are skin inspections so important? So after having a spinal cord injury, skin problems, including pressure injuries, are just very common, that about 80% of people living with a spinal cord injury will develop a wound at some point in their lives. So of course we wanna do everything we can to prevent that from happening, but if wound problems are going to occur, we wanna catch them as early as possible so that they can heal quickly. So when should your skin be inspected? So we recommend doing a skin inspection at least two times a day, morning and evening when you're changing your clothes because your skin is already exposed, so it should be easy and not too time consuming to do an inspection. So if it's difficult for you to do a skin inspection on your own, you could have a family member or a caregiver help you, or you might just need some help being able to reach and see your backside, and so you can use a long-handled mirror that has a bendable handle like you see in the picture. And it's also important to do a skin inspection anytime that you're trialing new equipment. So say if you're getting a new shower chair or a new power chair or wheelchair of any kind, then you'd wanna do extra skin inspections to make sure that the new equipment isn't causing pressure in any areas of your body. And if you were to have a fall or an accident, you'd also wanna check your skin right after that were to occur to make sure that any damage didn't happen that you might not be able to feel because of problems with sensation. So here are the steps of a skin inspection. So we want you to start with the front of your body and do a head to toe inspection and really focus on the bony parts of your body since bony areas are the most common areas where we see skin problems after having a spinal cord injury. And specifically what you're looking for are any color changes, something that might even just look like a bruise, certainly a cut, any swelling, raised, warm, or hardened areas. And the tricky thing about wounds when they first start is that they often can just look like a bruise, but wounds often form from the inside out. So by the time you're seeing an area of discoloration on your skin, it might not look too bad, but it's possible that there's more extensive damage underneath. And then we want you to repeat this process on your backside, doing a head to toe inspection, focusing on those bony areas. And also be sure to check under your skin folds, your groin and your buttocks area, since those are areas where moisture can build up and lead to skin problems related to moisture. So if you do notice a suspicious mark, there is a very specific test that we want you to do. So again, it might just look like a bruise when it's first starting. And so you want to press on your skin and see if it changes colors or blanches. So if when you press on your skin, it changes colors, we know that blood is flowing through. In other words, the skin is blanching. And so it probably is just a bruise, but we want you to keep a close eye on it. But say if it doesn't change colors, that means that blood's not flowing through and it's probably a stage one pressure sore. And we'd want you to call your doctor right away. And also, of course, the blanching is going to look different on different skin tones. And so what we want you to do is press on a part of your skin that you know is healthy and then compare it to the part where you suspect that you might have a pressure injury to be able to compare to see if there really is a problem. But when in doubt, call your healthcare provider. And whatever you do, don't massage the area. Just because of the small chance that it could be a blood clot, we wouldn't want to cause it to dislodge and travel to another part of your body. So contact your primary care team if you have any abnormalities or changes to your skin, if you identify a new non-blanching skin area. So again, doing that push test to see if it changes colors. And certainly if you have any open areas on your skin, because that indicates a more serious wound.